Today I wanted to go over the thoughts that I had on the Mac Mini M1. I just got it about a week ago. I had an unboxing video on that if you want to check that out. Things to consider if you're looking to get one or if you already have one and you just like watching more and more videos about it. I'm like that too sometimes. I don't know why. That's in human nature for some of us. Basically my thoughts are this. It's a solid machine that has a lot of power for the money that you put into it, and it has some issues. What are some of the issues that I've had with it? Well, you've probably already heard about them, but the Bluetooth and connectivity issues, they really are there. They, they aren't lying about it. People who've talked about it, it seems to be with every single one of them because I got it and immediately had those issues. Even though it has those issues, I would still recommend getting it. I switched from a previous iMac that was a 2017 model this is a good spec out one, but this one definitely runs faster. I have the 256 gigabyte model of the Mac Mini M1, and it has the upgraded RAM, so it's there's a 16 gigabytes of RAM inside. That's the most important for me, making sure it runs smooth. And then I have an external uh, one terabyte hard drive that I connect to it, so I have the extra storage that I need, and it works good for me. I do it for video editing. I'm gonna be editing this video on the Mac Mini M1 through Final Cut Pro 10. It's a nice, good experience. However, even with the hacks that maybe you've already heard about to be able to get around the Bluetooth issues, I use the Logitech uh, MX Master Keys as well as the mouse that goes with it, the 2S. Anyways, we got unboxing videos of those as well if you want to check them out. That keyboard and mouse, and even when you switch over to using the dongle with it, the little USB connector, it still has issues. There's still issues with that even though people say it works great once you use that. I still had issues. I still have issues now. Um, a little workaround that seems to be working is I put it into, I'll show you right here. So I put it into this little USB slash micro SD card type of thing to be able to connect to it. I put it into that because apparently if you have the USB dongle farther away from the port in the Mac mini, it has better connectivity. And I've seen that that's true. It still has issues here and there where it'll like, for on the keyboard, I'll like, I'll be typing just fine for a while and then all of a sudden it just like won't register stuff when I'm doing uh, commands into Final Cut Pro 10. I'll be putting in a command to do something uh, and it won't register and I'll think did I press it wrong? And I'll try it again And it just won't do anything and then realize that there's an issue with the keyboard and it takes a little bit for it to reset itself And then it goes back to normal. It's an inconvenience for sure. It's super annoying and honestly I mean Apple at this point it is a behemoth of a company and you would think stuff like this is Not an issue anymore, but it still is for some reason they can't figure out how to have these issues resolved It's kind of a staple of a computer, you would think, of being able to use a keyboard and mouse, you think that would be first and foremost, the top priority to be able to, that's how you interact with your computer, keyboard and mouse. But uh, yeah, so those issues are there, pretty annoying. I'm still glad that I did upgrade because it's, I think that eventually it'll, it'll fix itself or correct itself. If it doesn't, I might switch over to just a wired USB mouse and keyboard situation, we'll see. I don't know, right now it's not such a big issue that it, it's frustrating when it happens, but you know, it, it's not so frequent that it just, you know, makes me want to rip my hair out, but it's it's there, it's annoying. So keep that in mind if you're getting a Mac Mini M1 or maybe you have one and you're experiencing the same issues, it's not just you, it's, it's everyone, it seems like. And it's something that I've heard that happened with previous Mac Minis, not just the M1 version. Uh, as far as things that are great with it, it really is super fast. I love editing videos with the Apple ecosystem through Final Cut Pro 10. I've done previous video editing with DaVinci Resolve on Windows PCs and different stuff like that. I've tried uh, Adobe Premiere. Those just, I don't know, I, I've always had issues with them. Every time I use them, everyone says they're incredible, they're just powerful editing programs, and I had a decently specced uh, PC when I was using them, a Windows PC, and it it always lagged. It was lagging as I would scrub through the timeline as I went through to decide which part I wanted to cut in and out. And it always just, it worked, but it wasn't a very fun experience. And for me, one of the biggest things of creating videos is that everything is very fluid, that it's a very nice and easy, uh, you know, workflow that I can scroll to exactly where I'm wanting to go and it just, it gets there. And I can see exactly what I want to cut out and it'll show cutting out and it doesn't lag and stutter as I do that. And that's why I love this, the Mac Mini M1, especially with the Final Cut Pro, Apple ecosystem and everything. It just, it works really well. Everyone says that and I know it's, you know, kind of been told to death, but it's true. And I just kind of want to throw in my own 
voice to that that it really is super nice. I love it. It's fun to edit videos and it doesn't feel like it's hindering my ability to edit. It, it makes it fun and the creativity process is there. We got some photo editing apps. You know, I just do a little bit here and there as I need to. For thumbnails, I, I edit a tiny bit. Uh, I mostly do that on my iPad uh, Mini 5. I record on Sony cameras, the a7 III and the ZV-1. And yeah, the 4K video that I edit on it, it just, it just is so smooth and just no problems at all. So if it can do that, it can pretty much do anything that you throw at it. You can do photo editing and anything below that, Excel spreadsheets, writing Word documents, browsing on the web. It's all gonna work great with it and it has been working great with it. The only thing to note that I don't, I didn't realize this because I never had a Mac Mini before. One thing to know, uh, switching if you have, you've had an iMac or something like that before, the screen turn on time is, uh, it makes it a little bit annoying. It's not, honestly not a big deal at all, but just to nitpick a little bit. The Mac Mini will turn on super fast. The Mac will be on, but I'm still waiting for my screen to turn on. It's a Samsung. Super nice screen, it's 4K and stuff, and it works great, it looks great. It's just a little bit slower to turn on. You know, like, we're talking about like five, six seconds instead of like the instantaneous with the M1 MacBook Air and all that stuff that turns on instantly when you open it up. It's it's just a little different in that regard. There really aren't that many ports on the back of it, a uh, very minimal amount, but it hasn't been an issue for me. I'm not someone who uses dual screens. I just like having one big monitor to edit on. Um, at least for video editing and whatnot, so it's great for me for that. Before I got the Mini M1, I was looking at waiting to get the new iMac coming out, and then I saw it come out, and it was just the 24-inch model, and it had that giant uh, bezel on the bottom, and then I was expecting it to have some better specs as well. Uh, so that those are the reasons I decided. I was like, all right, I was waiting for that. I was like, if that one's really good, I'm going to get that. But then I saw the announcement of it and everything, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to go with a Mac Mini. That way I have the 16 gigabytes of RAM, which the other one wasn't gonna have or it would have cost a ton to get it into there. And overall, I just feel like for me, this is a better setup. And I'm costing, I don't know, probably around like 13, 1400 bucks for everything, but it's a decently specced out system that I won't have to upgrade for a long time and I'm happy with it. So those are my thoughts on the Mac Mini M1. If you're curious about getting one, I'd recommend it. You're gonna have a little bit of a hiccup with doing the whole keyboard and mouse situation. There's ways around it. If you just do wired, that's gonna be a fixer upper on that. That's gonna solve the issues on that, but just keep those things in mind if you're getting one. If you have any other questions, leave some comments down below. I tend to get to all the comments as fast as I can. I like to have an engaged community on the channel and try to get to every comment that I can, at least the ones that I feel like they're looking for a response. Thanks for coming by. We'll see you in the next video. Later.